Hello. Well, we're about ready to get started on cleaning parts of the sewing machine on the Singer 301, as well as how we clean the body, the outside and the inside. And I just wanted to pop in first and say, I'd film this a little bit differently. This is a really long process and at least it is for me. And so I didn't want you to have to watch me clean every single part and me constantly needing to think of what to say to fill up all of the dead space. So I have tried to give you an idea of, of each process, how you clean most of the parts. I only need to show you how with a few of them. You don't need to watch every one. And then anything that needed special attention, I go ahead and I do focus a little bit of video time on that. The motor I clean outside, I use an electrical cleaner and so the fumes are pretty nasty so that is outside. I also show you how I use my ultrasonic cleaner which you don't have to do that. If you soak your parts in your cleaner, I use Crub Cutter they will come clean. You might just wait a little bit longer. Typically, I don't have to run parts in my ultrasonic cleaner for more than three minutes, which is super for me. Plus it keeps my hands out of the chemicals a little bit more. I do this all pretty much at my kitchen sink. Uh, they go in this cleaner and then I can rinse the parts off and dry them really quickly, which is super important. You probably will see a little bit of flash rust anyway, even if you dry them well. So your option is to just dry them really well, get a coat of oil on them pretty quickly, or just come back later if you don't have time to do it all at once and be ready to use a little bit of uh, rust remover and then oil up your parts. I will show you how I clean a black Singer 301 and a tan Singer 301. I do both of those colors differently. The black is a much more careful process. The tan one I actually put in the sink and I can get my cleaners down inside and flush it out with water uh, and then I dry it with a hairdryer and I've never had an issue doing that. So I hope that you can tolerate how this video will be broken up a little bit but really I thought it was the best way to give you all the information on how to clean. Hopefully not taking too much time either because it's pretty self-explanatory. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have different ideas that work for you better, I would love to hear about them. And uh, now all we have to do is get started. First, I am setting up to clean the parts, I have my crud cutter, and I also have rags because you'll need them to dry the parts. I have a little strainer, which is excellent for rinsing all the tiny parts off. My toothbrush and special brushes so I can get into holes and things like that. A dish that I'm going to add my cleaner to with some water. And this really just depends how strong you want to make the cleaner. You can go 25% cleaner, 75% water, half and half, whatever works for you. Uh, you need at least 25% in order to get the parts clean. Then once I get that mixed up, I can go ahead and start adding in the parts. So I chose parts from the needle bar and the tension pin releasing lever, and I'm just placing that uh, into the cleaner and you can see how dirty they are when they go in and keeping uh, just a few parts at a time really helps you not mix things up so I tend to do one bag of parts at a time because they're already separated out so the needle bar is a little bit long for this bowl but I'm probably going to uh, stick that in my ultrasonic cleaner <laughs> in a moment so we'll go ahead and just um, put it in the bowl with the other parts for now so you can see how this crud cutter is going to work now we can just swirl the parts around a little bit you can see the color changing in the solution because that's all of the varnished oil 
coming off the parts. So you might want to let them sit for a little bit if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. And I would say three minutes, five minutes, and then you can take them out and start checking to see how clean they're getting. After the parts have soaked for a few minutes, it's time to give them a scrub with a toothbrush. And after you scrub them over, you may decide they need to soak a little bit longer or they're ready to come out and rinse. So I have different little brushes I like to use on some of these parts, especially ones that have holes or tubes and you'll see here i'm just grabbing one of my real slender brushes and i'm sticking it up inside that was the needle bar clamp i believe there so keep doing this until you feel like you've gotten all of the varnished oil and residue out before you start to actually rinse the parts when i looked at the needle bar here I decided it would go ahead for sure and go into the ultrasonic cleaner but you would want to take your toothbrush and really rub it and scrub it inside where the needle bar clamp goes on the machine a lot of lint and oil will collect there and over time it just it gets really gunky so once you're happy with how clean the parts are go ahead and use a strainer looks like I forgot a part. We'll go ahead and get that scrubbed up first as well. Uh, just make sure you've got it as good as you want to get it. Then you'll want to go ahead and put all those parts into a strainer. And this is so you can rinse off all of the chemicals that you're using and just have a clean part in the end. When you rinse the parts, you just really want to make sure that you do get all of the cleaner off. And if you're nervous about losing a small part, you could lay a towel over the drain in your sink so that if anything flipped out of the strainer, it would catch it on the towel. Now, I just normally dump the parts out right onto a towel and start drying them. And just give them a squeeze and I will take some of the parts with the tubes, like the needle bar clamp, and actually get inside of it with a Q-tip to make sure that it's dry where the threads are and everything. And if you don't do that, you actually could end up with a little bit of rust on the inside of the needle bar clamp. So you'll want to check it out. But look how great they look. Nice and clean ready for a little light coat of oil and to go back onto the machine. I'm going to go ahead and clean the tension unit in the ultrasonic, but not these painted parts. They will not tolerate Krug Cutter or other cleaners. So wash them by hand with dish soap. The other parts are totally fine to go ahead and ultrasonic clean or soak in a dish of Krug Cutter or other cleaner and they'll come out looking just fine. Just don't do the painted ones. I still like to use a strainer, even in my ultrasonic cleaner. I just set it down inside and the water can still vibrate around the parts and everything comes out nice and clean and I don't have to fish parts out. Take a look here and you can see that the gunk is just literally coming off the parts into the water. I love watching this. And the nice part is that I do this for only three minutes and they are clean. Now I need to go ahead and remove the handle from this top so I can clean the parts that hold the handle on. There are a couple screws and you just want to remove them with a screwdriver and once we get the screws out, there are a couple other parts that you'll want to add to your little pile of parts to clean. You have a screw and sort of a little metal clip on each side. And then when I get this other screw off, I'll be able to show you how the handle comes off and the last two little parts. So there's the second screw and clip 
And if I just lift up and jiggle, you see these little metal pins fall out. These can also go in the cleaner. The handle itself and the top we will polish, but we will not put any cleaner on it. The same goes for the cover on the nose of the machine. There are a few parts you can go ahead and remove. You see them here. They are kind of in the way when you polish up the nose and instead of cleaning polish out, I just like to take these screws out. This is what keeps the nose clipped closed. So you have a screw and a metal clip. And then this is actually one of your thread guards that is screwed into the machine. And you can just unscrew this screw and get that thread guard out of the way. Both of the screws and the clip and the thread guard can go into cleaner but then the actual nose plate or cover, we will just polish that up. Again, you don't want any cleaners on this black paint. So we'll set that aside and clean the other parts. The stitch length indicator plate, no cleaners. Just run it under water. You can use a little bit of a gentle dish soap on your fingers and sort of rub it around. You can get some of the grime off this way, but you're not going to strip that lacquer finish that is on the plate. Once you rinse it off, you can go back over it with the polish that you'll use on the body of the machine, and that's going to make it super shiny and remove any of the residue that that gentle cleaner didn't get. That's all you have to do. Okay, so... I'm going to be spraying off a couple different parts of the motor. I like to do it outside over my fire pit because of the smells and the chemicals. I really don't want that in my house. So I have two motors actually I'm going to be cleaning while I'm out here. This one I haven't done anything to at all. Um, the other one I did actually clean a little bit pre uh, spray but hopefully you can see just how much uh, carbon is going to come off when I spray this uh, I'm really going to focus kind of up in here but I'm always going to keep it tilted this way so that none of this cleaner runs up into this bearing right here so I'll just start spraying And the stuff that's running off of this is just black. You can see. Focus my spray around the commutator too. And I just do it until I feel like I'm not seeing so much black runoff. This end, I will not clean with the spray. I'll clean this with something else by hand. The other portion that you wanna clean with this cleaner is the coil of wires. the other coil. The benefit of using this is that it's going to dry super fast. I still probably wouldn't put this in the machine for a day or so after doing this. And that's it. This one I didn't need to spray as much. Okay. This is the last bit before I start showing you how to clean the body of the machine. And thank you for watching this long. 
I uh, admire your patience. We are going to just use rubbing alcohol to clean the outside of the motor. This part's sort of important to get clean only because remember when I took the motor out, I couldn't get it to drop out of the machine. All this varnished oil that's coming off with the rubbing alcohol is what was keeping it stuck up inside. So I really just want to make sure I get that all off. And then once I do, which alcohol just works so well, once I do, I will go ahead and start looking at the rest of the outside of the motor and seeing what needs to be cleaned off that the spray that I use missed. Normally you just have to give it a good wipe and then go ahead and check out the commutator itself. There may be a little bit of carbon dust left behind and the rubbing alcohol just running it around the commutator will go ahead and lift that all off for you and then go ahead and also look at the end of the shaft that goes down into the bearing itself you'll want to clean that off so it can spin freely in the bearing and you'll get really good fast speed out of that motor so wipe those parts off the best you can we'll go ahead and polish that commutator too but for now I'm just getting the little extra bits of carbon dust that I missed now I'm going to focus on the worm gear if you have some fingernails <laughs> it's helpful but I'm just shoving that rag down into the grooves and the gear and spinning it around and wiping out the remainder of the old grease that was packed in there and it just takes a little bit of patience really to scrub all this out but it's satisfying because when you're done it's nice and shiny and you know it's going to work really well if you take a look up here where the bearing is pressed into the tube just use some rubbing alcohol on a q-tip but be careful not to use too much you don't want excess to run off the end of the q-tip down into the bearing itself so just check it before you start rubbing that q-tip around sometimes i'll dab it on a towel and then i know i don't have too much alcohol that's going to leak down into the bearing and really mess with the properties of the grease that's in between the ball bearings there i just like to keep doing that until i get it off and then i test out the spin and look at that it's working great now we can go ahead and polish up our commutator there are many ways to do this but this little rubber stick i got from the singer featherweight shop and i use it all the time for many different things I gently rub it over the commutator. You have to be careful. You don't want to take off too much of that copper. I don't know how thick it is, but you can see it polishes up nice. You can also do it on the contacts for where the brush housings rest against these little copper clips. You can rub this little stick over it and polish them up so they're nice and shiny again and then you know that there's nothing in the way blocking how well the contact is being made with the brush housing itself you also want to take a look at these contacts this is where the wiring plugs onto the motor and they get pretty tarnished Brasso is my friend here. I just put a little bit on a rag and just a small little drop. It's not really going to take much. And then I just kind of go ahead and rub them uh, with the Brasso. And if you pay attention here, you'll see how quickly you see it takes that tarnish or patina off of the brass. And this is important because you want really good contact so that your motor gets the power that it needs 
and your light works properly. Just be careful. Uh, these ends are kind of soldered on and you don't want to break the solder. So don't yank and pull. Polish off all the extra brasso with a clean part of your towel and you will be good to go. Look at the difference. It's amazing. Now do the brushes and no cleaners here. Just give them a nice wipe. There might be a little bit of oil or residue on them. Just wipe them both off. That's all you do here. You do not add any kind of oils or detergents to the brushes themselves. The ball bearing, same thing. I really don't recommend putting cleaner on this, just wiping it off really well. Because the metal on this bearing is porous, if you get it wet, if you add cleaner, you are going to possibly inject that cleaner into the bearing and you don't want to do that. The only thing it gets is grease. Q-tip down the center, give it a good scrub and you're done. The same thing applies to this insulator. Just go ahead and wipe it off with a rag. Make sure that there's no oil or anything on it and that's all you have to do. The wick, in this case, the grease wick, was destroyed. Here's a new one. I'm going to go ahead and grease that up and I will put that back in the bottom of the motor in the little port. You see I got this nice and clean. I actually put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, so it's good to go as well. The brush housings, I don't think they need Brasso. I think they're good. So I don't want to forget the little felt pad that goes under the bearing in the bottom of the motor. This here, I'll go ahead and soak in rubbing alcohol, take it out and squeeze it in a rag a couple times and just see how much grease is coming out. I'll probably repeat this process a few times. Once I finish this, the next thing we'll do is jump to cleaning the actual body of the machine. And I just want to say thanks uh, at the midpoint here for spending so much time watching this video and learning how to clean your machine. I hope you will ask questions if you have them, but most importantly, I just hope it helps you learn what to do uh, with the different parts and what's a safe way to clean them. So let's get to cleaning the body of the machine. Before you start cleaning, you're going to want to do a little bit of degreasing and that's just removing any of the large portions of extra grease that has been built up in the machine. Whatever you can wipe off, you want to do that. So tools that work for this are going to be Q-tips. I like the ones that have different shaped ends. If I have a pointy Q-tip, I can spin the gear and gather up all this grease before I actually start getting in there and cleaning with cleaners. Paper towels are a great thing to have. If your hands are small enough, your fingers are small enough, you can get inside and wipe it out. So I'm working with a black machine and the difference and how I would clean these if this were a tan painted machine. Um, isn't doesn't start here, but actually, because I always try to get as much of the like, caked on stuff off as I can. But then once I get all of that off, my process is different depending on the paint on the machine. So I'm going to be flushing this out with uh, some cleaner, probably rubbing alcohol. But I feel comfortable doing that because as I flush this out, it's going to just go down to the inside of the machine. It's not getting on the paint and destroying the finish. And after I get all this grease off, 
I have a brush that I will use to clean with and I use um, just a little dropper and I'll drop with the dropper the alcohol down on. I'll rub it around with the brush. I'll get in all the grooves of each gear. There's two gears here that I'm cleaning, this one and this one. And I will just keep doing that until I get almost all of that old grease and residue out. Inside this particular hand wheel was pretty gross. There is just so much grease. Literally. <laughs> Ugh, yuck. But once I get a majority of this grease off, I actually take old cut up t-shirts and I dip them in rubbing alcohol and I'm very, very careful not to get any of the alcohol on the paint. And I'll clean this out and I'll also go in with a Q-tip dipped in alcohol and just keep cleaning it until I get all of the grease off. And I feel like it's nice and clean. The same goes for underneath the machine. First, I'm just removing as much of the old grease as I can from the gears. <laughs> that looks like earwax, that's gross. And I can just rotate the hand wheel in order to spin these gears around and get a majority of this off. And it's everywhere. It's it's up in here. Sorry, I think you mostly saw my hands. Be careful, pay attention to not like get a bunch of cotton snagged on the um, gears if you can help it. You can get it off later if you do. Don't forget to run your Q-tip on the underside of this gear here. Sometimes it will have a lot of grease on the back. Here I've started to wipe down the shaft and the gears with rubbing alcohol, getting all the extra uh, grease and oil off. This is after I have went over the gears with a paintbrush and rubbing alcohol. So this is sort of my last final wipe inside the top of the machine before I start working on cleaning off the hand wheel. Now I am taking my t-shirt and rubbing alcohol and I'm wiping all inside the hand wheel to get out the extra grease. And once I get that fairly wiped clean, I'll come back in with a Q-tip that I dip in rubbing alcohol and I'll keep going in all the little crevices that were harder to reach with the rag and scrubbing away at that varnished on oil until I get it all off. And I won't get it off in this video here. I will come back and finish it up, but just to give you an idea of what you need to do. Also, remember to check all the holes everywhere on your machine, everywhere a screw goes, and just use that Q-tip with rubbing alcohol and swipe it inside the hole. I prefer to clean out the bottom after I clean out the top. So I'm wiping the gears off. Now I'm stuffing a towel and I'm going to start applying alcohol with the paintbrush. And I'll just keep doing this until I really feel that I have the gears as clean as I can possibly get them. And it'll take several passes. Feel free to grab a toothpick or something if you need to to get into the little teeth and I'm just dropping alcohol onto the gears kind of flushing off the uh, dirty alcohol wipe your brush off on a towel so you're not putting a dirty brush back onto the gears and just keep going over them until you feel like they are clean once you're satisfied with the gears an old t-shirt with rubbing alcohol on it is a great way to continue wiping down the inside of the machine on the bottom. Make sure you get up in the hole where the motor goes. That's why it gets so stuck in there. 
all the varnished oil does need to come out. Moving on to the hook, you want to pay special attention to the shaft where the hook slides on. And I would just say, be careful with the alcohol. You don't want anything to drip down onto the body of the machine. If it does, wipe it really quickly. Get around the feed dogs and um, down into all the little nooks and crannies. Make sure you're getting the lint out as you're cleaning off all of the old oil. And just keep going around until you are certain that it is clean and there's no more lint and gunk left. Now you can move up into the nose of the machine. And I like to start with the bushings that hold the presser bar and the needle bar. And I'm just running a Q-tip down them with the alcohol, making sure I get them nice and clean, taking several passes to make sure that everything comes out, cleaning the ends and the insides. Hold a little towel or t-shirt underneath so none of that alcohol actually drips down onto the body of the machine. You just want to make sure these are nice and clean because the needle bar is moving through this bushing constantly as you sew. After you've done that you can start cleaning out the rest of the inside of the nose around the counterbalance, um, just giving it all a good wipe, really focusing on where parts are going to go. Uh, the rest is sort of a cosmetic clean. Make sure you focus too on all of the little holes that you know that screws are going to go back into. So this is where your Q-tips are gonna come in handy and you can clean inside where the set screw on the counterbalance will be. And uh, really every screw hole in your machine, I think I've said it before, but you just want to keep going over them until they're nice and clean and then you can apply some fresh oil when you're all done before you add the screws back to the machine. After you do that you'll want to move to the front and just pay a little bit of attention where the tension unit is set onto the machine. Clean off any of that varnished oil. Again just use a lot of caution when you're using the rubbing alcohol. Finally, before I show you how to clean a tan machine, I'm going to show you how I clean the wiring that I left on the machine. And I will do the same thing on the tan machine as I'm doing on this black one. But it's just rubbing alcohol and an old t-shirt and I'm wiping down all the uh, contacts and the wires. And then I will actually get in uh, the where the light screws in and clean that out with a q-tip and also the little knob that you turn to turn the light on and off there can be a lot of gunk in those grooves but you can let everything dry when you're done wipe it down give it a good um, cleaning until you see there's no more dirt left and that's really all you have to do now the way that i clean a tan sewing machine Singer 301 is a lot different than a black machine and they probably both have their ups and downs but this certainly goes a lot quicker so I have went ahead and bagged up my electrical parts and they have tape around them a little water might get in here but I'm gonna dry this off very quickly and it will be a number of days before I ever get it wired back up. So I'm not too worried if a little bit of water gets in here through the process of cleaning. I have a version of Craig Cutter, which I found not that long ago, <laughs> but it is a foaming spray and it is awesome for cleaning the parts inside the top of the machine in the nose and in the bottom of the machine. So what I'm going to be focusing on right now are these gears here. What I'm gonna to do to start, I'm not even gonna add water. I'm just going to go ahead and spray the cred cutter into the machine. 
And so I'm going to just focus on one side at a time. So right now, that's the top. Once the crud cutter has had a chance to kind of soak in and start working, I'm just going to come in with a toothbrush and I'm going to start scrubbing all of the areas that I want to get clean. And this just takes a little bit and sometimes a couple applications, especially around your gears. These didn't have a ton of grease globbed up on them, so I did not go over them with a Q-tip first or anything like that. I just went ahead and put it in the sink and you saw me spray it down. So as I'm cleaning these gears, I'm running the toothbrush over both this upper gear and then the lower gear down here, making sure to get on the underside of that gear. And then once I feel like I've given it a good brushing, I'll spin it a little bit. I'll spray it again and start brushing. And this is just another tedious, time-consuming process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep spraying and brushing and then I'll come back. Let's go ahead and rinse away this one time at least just so you can see already how different it looks. And it's a good time to find some different tools. These are actually uh, a kit that I found that was for cleaning baby bottles and things like that. So it was in the um, baby section at Walmart. But all of these brushes, because they're so nice and slender, really helps to get into some of those hard to reach places. So once you've given this a once over, you wanna get your water running and you just rinse it out. And already, there's a fabulous difference here. And you will have to tilt your machine to dump out some of that water. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back at it again with more cleaner. So I'll keep doing this, and then when it's time to turn around, I'll come back. Now I have flipped it up on the end. And I also have just my regular crud cutter here. This is not diluted. It is full strength. Um, I, tend to, I tend to work you know, fairly quickly, but like I said, I'm not too worried about this damaging the pain of the machine. One thing I will say, uh, wear a, don't wear a white shirt when you do this because you really um, do have a lot of splatter, especially when you're uh, running the toothbrush and all the different parts, or over all the different parts. So you're going to um, get it all over you. And I'll have quite a mess to clean up when I'm done. I have an old sponge, whatever tools that work for you. Uh, this is just about getting the body clean and there are so many little nooks and crannies. Now, we're gonna get the majority of this off, but you're still gonna find little places that you missed, and that's when, once you have the machine dry, you can go over it, take a good look, and um, hit any of those little missed spots with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, anything that was kind of stubborn, and you can go ahead and get it off. So I'm just cleaning inside the hand wheel. I'm trying to rub the threads of the hand wheel uh, here and get all the old crud out of them. And don't forget the end of the machine down here. And then when I'm satisfied with this end, and you wanna pay a little bit of special attention to this hole where the feed regulator bolt goes, that gets pretty nasty in there. Also where the uh, bobbin winder attaches. 
I like to just make sure I'm getting in all the screw holes. So when I'm satisfied that I've got most of it off and the rest I can just, you know, hit with a Q-tip later, I'm gonna rinse it off. So just gonna spray these down. So here especially, all the oil that's ran down from someone oiling the needle bar and the presser bar um, has turned an ugly orange color. But what's amazing is the crud cutter just almost instantly dissolves it. So I'm just gonna make sure this is everywhere. It's gonna come in with my toothbrush and start cleaning all the crevices. Pay extra attention here. I'll flip this back up and I'll run a brush down these holes as well. But really the crud cutter is gonna do most of the work for you. So I think what I'll do is give it a rinse and see how much I still have left behind. So that's rinsed, I can flip it over. Okay, so I've sprayed the underside with the Krug Cutter. I'm let it sit for just a minute or two. And first, I'm just really gonna focus on these gears. And I'll want to keep turning them so I can get all of the teeth. And you should be able to spin them with your fingers or grab the counterbalance here and you can give them a good turn. And make sure you get the underside of the bigger gear here with your brush as you spin it around. So I have a sponge, I can use that to go over some of these other parts. And then I'm gonna give it a rinse and see where I'm at. So the gears are looking fairly clean, but I'm not totally happy with them yet. So I'll keep scrubbing them. I still need to hit these areas of the feed dogs. They get nice and dirty. While I'm doing this, I should point out that I didn't have you all take the feed off your machine. And quite honestly, I forgot that part. So I will take the feed off once I get it dry. So I'm just double checking, going over the front now, making sure that I've got everything wiped down. Pay attention to where the uh, badges are. Now I'm just going around all of the bobbin winding parts, making sure that I get everything scrubbed off in all the grooves where the lampshade goes around the tension unit. Getting close to pulling this out of the sink and getting it dry. So when I get done, all I'm gonna do is give this a really good rinse and make sure that I get all of my cleaner off of the machine. I think I can go ahead and rinse this off. Now what I'm gonna do before I lift it up onto a towel is I'm just gonna spin the machine. Let all that extra water drip and run out. And then I have to be pretty fast about drying it. Okay, so now I'm just going to start drying the machine. And you wanna go ahead and get the wires, if you um, wrap them in tape, go ahead and get them uncovered because I get water in here, like I said, it's normally just a little bit that ends up working its way in, but I wanna go ahead and get these out of the water as soon as I can. Not too bad, pretty dry. And we'll get this one. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is start drying it with a hair dryer because the faster I can dry this machine, the less flash rust I will actually have to deal with uh, at the end of the day. For this last little bit, you would never hear me over the hair dryer, but I'm focusing on all the holes in the machine, all the openings on the top and inside the nose, and I'm hitting it with the highest heat setting until I feel like I've gotten every part dry. The machine will be really hot to the touch when you're finished with this part. A couple things that I wanna point out. While you're drying, have Q-tips handy. Use them in all of the holes to pull out any extra water. So all your screw holes, you wanna go ahead and get the Q-tips in there. It just helps. Otherwise you're just spread, forcing the water out with the dryer and blowing it all over the machine. Another thing that I'd like to point out is I have had this out for maybe two minutes and um, started hitting it with hair dryer. I'm already getting flash rust. It's almost unavoidable. So do not panic if you start to see that because it's really easy to take care of and um, it, I promise it'll look good as new when it's done. Okay, now that I have the machine dry, I'm going to start dealing with the flash rust that is popping up in certain places on the machine. So I like this crud cutter, the must for rust. <laughs> Tend to be a crud cutter fan, I know, but this works really well. And what I try to do is I brush it on and um, then I wipe as much of it off as I can with a paper towel. So what works for me is I pour a little bit into a dish and I have some crud cutter here as well as some rubbing alcohol that I'm going to use. And I simply will be dipping my brush in a little bit of the must for rust and running it on the parts that have rusted. Then wiping my brush off on my towel that I have the machine sitting on and going back in again with more. But once I feel like I've removed the rust, I dry any extra up the paper towel or Q-tip, whatever you have handy. Get that extra off. So all the parts are gonna get this treatment. So if we flip this over to the underside, you're probably gonna see it there too. So I am, and, and not as much here as um, maybe on other places on the machine, but definitely the camera is picking it up a little bit the uh, gears. I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of the rust remover and just quickly work to get the rust remover on. And you'll just see the rust is gonna disappear right before your eyes. It's pretty amazing. But then wipe off any excess. And this is what you're gonna do for the whole machine. So you might see rust on the part that uh, holds the screws for the feed dogs. You're gonna do that. The counterbalance inside the nose that the uh, needle bar is screwed into is going to probably have some flash rust and maybe even up in on the arms of the fort feed dog system. And if you have a paintbrush like this, you can reach in there pretty easily and get them off. These uh, screw heads down here, that's rust guys, typically. And if you just swirl around, can you see that? I add some fresh, keep going. Wipe it off. 
And that's really all you have to do to get the rust off. The shaft, I'm just, I dipped the paper towel in it a little bit and now I'm just spinning it around. I'm getting any flash rust off. And then come in with a dry paper towel and I like to dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I just wipe off any extra before it dries onto the stainless steel, which isn't supposed to rust, but apparently it does. So that's what I'm gonna do all over the whole machine, any places that I find rust. Then I'll come back with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol and hit any parts that I feel like I didn't get stuff. So like here, I don't know if you can see that, and right there, that little black spot. Okay, that's cosmetic. But if I'm going to take time, I'm getting everything off. So any places that missed uh, getting fully cleaned, I'm going to clean with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, uh, especially the, the working parts. So if I find any leftover grease in these gears, I'm going to clean them out before I get uh, moving and um, reinstalling parts or polishing the machine or anything like that. Anywhere where parts are going to go back on or in, screw holes and things like that, you definitely want to make sure you got all the grime and the rust out before you start adding parts back on. So I'm going to spend an hour or so on this machine cleaning up all of the rust and grease or oil that I missed and then I will polish the body before I start putting any parts back on and I like to polish the body before I start putting parts on only because I don't want to polish around say the tension unit. I don't want to have to polish around that. I'd rather polish this machine, get it nice and shiny, and then put the parts back on and give it one final touch up uh, before it's all ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you have any questions uh, please just leave them in the comments below. Thank you for following along. Hopefully your machine is coming along nicely as well. Have a good day. Bye.